Hi everyone, this is going to be a video about setting up the new Game & Watch core by Adam Gastineau. This core also supports Tiger Electronics games. Now, let me show you how to set this up. Let's first download the cores. You can download them manually and copy them to your mister from GitHub, but a better method is to use the Update All script. If you don't have Update All script installed, I'll provide a link to it in the description. All you have to do is copy the updateall.sh file to your SD card scripts folder. So with update all installed, boot up your mister and go to scripts. Scroll down to update all, then run it. You want to enter the settings, so press up on your controller or keyboard before the 16 seconds are up. This will bring up the settings. Now select unofficial cores, then set AGG23's Mr. Cores to Yes. Go back to the main menu. Save your changes. And then select Exit and Run Update All. Your Mr. will now start updating and include Adam Gastonal's Game & Watch Core. Just wait until Update All is completed. When your mister is done updated and you go to the console core listing, the new core will be listed as Game & Watch. The other Game & Watch core is listed as GNW. Unfortunately, the ROMs for these two cores are not compatible with each other. Pierco's Game & Watch core uses .bin files and Adam's uses .gnw files. I tried renaming the extensions for the ROMs to use them in the other cores, but I just get garbled graphics. The next step now is to set up your ROMs. To set up ROMs, first download the ROM generation tool from GitHub. I'll link to it in the description. Save the zip file with the ROM generator into an empty folder. Extract the contents of the zip file. I'm using Windows, so I'll go into the Windows folder that was extracted. Here, create a folder called MAME, all lowercase, and another folder called MR all lowercase. Keeping it all lowercase is very important for macOS and Linux operating systems. Now go into the main folder and create a folder called ROMs. And another folder called Artwork. Again, all lowercase. The ROMs folder is where you want to copy all the Game & Watch and Tiger Electronics ROMs. These are the same ROMs used in MAME. I can't tell you where to get these ROMs, but I'm sure you can find an archive out there that has them. In the artwork folder, you copy the main artwork zips for each game there. You can obtain artwork from progretosnaps.net. Keep in mind that the artwork files and ROM files have the exact same names. Don't confuse them and make sure the artwork files are being saved to the artwork folder and the ROM files are being copied to the ROM folder. Now we are ready to run the ROM generation tool. In a command prompt, navigate to the Windows folder. If you're using Mac OS or Linux, you will be using a terminal and navigate to the respective OS folder. Here, you see I'm in the Windows folder on the command prompt. If we take a look at the folder contents, it contains the main folder, the Mr. folder, the ROM generator executable, and a JSON file. To run the ROM generator on the command prompt, type the command you see on screen. If you name the folders differently than what I told you, then this command will fail. So make sure the folder names are exactly as I told you earlier in this video. And that includes them being lowercase. Hit enter to run the command. And you can see that it's generating the appropriate ROM files. The tool will also let you know if there are any issues, like missing ROM files or artwork files. When the tool is done, go into the Mr. folder and the generated ROM files will now be there. Copy these files to your mister under the Game & Watch folder that's underneath the Games folder. There is an error you might come across when generating ROMs. This one may tell you that there's a missing asset. On this specific error, it's telling me that the file bg.png does not exist in the tgaunt.zip artwork file. But if I browse the artwork zip file itself, I do see that there is a bg file there, but its extension is jpeg instead of png. So what I'm going to do is convert the JPEG file into a PNG file. I can do this with a built-in Windows 11 image viewer 
or you can use whatever image editor you prefer. Just make sure you are saving to PNG. Save the PNG file to the same folder where all the artwork zip files are stored. Go back to that folder and drag and drop the PNG file onto the artwork zip file for the game. In this case, it's for tgaunt.zip, which is gauntlet. Now rerun the ROM generation tool. And if I check the status of the gauntlet ROM creation, I can see that it is successful now. Now for the fun part and test out some games. As with all cores, you want to first define your control buttons, so do that and save the settings. The first game I tried was Donkey Kong. It's been a long time since I played this type of LCD game, well over 20 years. I recommend looking at an image of the respective game you're playing or downloading a manual from the internet to see what controls are available. I died a lot in the beginning because I didn't realize I couldn't jump when I'm under the steel beams. Once I realized that, I did much better. This game pretty much feels like Donkey Kong. The way you defeat Donkey Kong is different. You must swing yourself from this crane and grab these key looking objects. But like Donkey Kong, you must make your way to the top and avoid getting hit by the barrels. You still need to get used to the controls, but once you do, things will be enjoyable. With all these games, you must get used to the sudden movements of the characters. The technology didn't allow for smooth movement and scrolling. All character and object movements were permanently set on the screen. Nothing can overlap and movement was determined by turning off the current object and then turning on the appropriate object of its next position. Usually when a game is first boot up, you will be able to see all the possible places where all characters and objects can be. I next tried Popeye. Here, you have olive oil throwing objects where you, as Popeye, must catch them while avoiding getting hit by Bluto. Now let me show you some Tiger Electronics games. This is Gauntlet, and it does an impressive job of mimicking a pseudo 3D playing field considering the technology. Again, the sudden movements of the characters and play area is very off-putting at first, but after a couple of minutes, you get the hang of it and will have no problem navigating the maze. You can move up, down, left, and right. For the last game I tried was Tiger Versions of Batman, and it's a side-scrolling action game. With a lot of these games, it's difficult to judge how you would get hit by an object. For example, on the first boss fight, it looks like the smoke he shoots cannot hit me while I'm on the ground, which is not the case. I must jump to avoid the smoke, and the smoke there does look like it hits me when I jump. This is again due to the technology, because objects cannot overlap, and since the bottom row is already taken up by the level enemies and projectiles, there was no space left to put the boss's smoke, except on top of the enemies. With these type of games, you have to deal with quirkiness like this in order to get far. Anyway, that's how you set up the new Game & Watch core by Adam Gostino. Let me know what your experience is with these LCD games in the comments. I would love to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.